Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper. Takedown Wrestling Media. Our coverage continues. Nike Hot Seat guest today, the head coach of the Mountain Hawks of Lehigh. He joins us now from his home, Pat Santoro. Pat, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Scott. Congratulations on, uh, first of all, uh, the job you've done there is obviously so highly respected by your athletic department, but also by wrestling. Wrestling is standing up and taking a, a good long look at you guys. You come in with a very deep an experienced team. Can you talk about that? Yes, yeah, probably the, the, the deepest uh, team we've, we've had ever coached since we've been at Lehigh. Um, there's a lot of good depth, a lot of good young kids coming up. Uh, we have a lot of good older, senior, and junior leadership, so it's a nice mix we have. You have four All-Americans, 11 NCAA qualifiers returning. i got to believe expectations are high. They would be for me anyway. Let's talk a bit about some of those that are going to be contributing for you, including Mason Beckman. And Nathaniel Brown. Yeah, they started their year off with the All Star match. Um, now they both took losses there. It was a, it was a, it was good to be out there. Though. It was good to see that kind of competition early on. We like to schedule tough early. Uh, we like to find out where we where we're at and where we need to be by March. Those two guys have the capability of absolutely beating anybody in the country at any given time. Brown, for example, finished um, what second at eighty four. Uh, just last season, uh, earning his first All-American medal. Can you talk about the intensity he's wrestling with this year? Yeah, he's he's done a great job, Nate. It's been um, he's been an outstanding individual. Probably the probably the one person that I've coached over the years that's had the most growth as a wrestler. Um, he's just from day one to now, he's just done everything right. He's worked on. It's been a process for him, uh, but he's done everything right, and he's he's gotten some great accolades since. But you know his job is right now. He's really focused on winning a national championship, and he knows he has a lot of work to do, but he's willing to do it. And joining him as a fifth-year senior is Mason Beckman, one of my favorite wrestlers to watch. Uh, talent, man, he's got it by the bucketful. Yeah, he's got a lot of talent. Um, you know, we, when he opens up and lets it go, he is fun to watch. Um, you know, that's just. One thing we're going to be working on is just getting him to open up and have a lot of fun. If he focuses on just having fun, uh, the, the wins and losses will take care of themselves. Mitch Minotti has got to be one of those fellows that you're looking for uh, as far as uh, just great and exemplary uh, matches that will help inspire the other uh, team, uh, the members of the team. Is that true? Yeah, Mitch is a great leader. He's one of the toughest guys I coached. I mean, he was pretty much... You know, getting to that NCAA tournament last year, most guys would have, you know, probably quit. Uh, Mitch just fought through a lot of injuries, wrestled hurt through the whole tournament, uh, the whole second half of the year, really, um, and just found a way to get on the podium. He's um, mentally, he's really focused and very tough. Darian Cruz is a sophomore, and it seems like I've been saying his name uh, for a lot more than just those few years. But Darian uh, reached the podium as a true freshman in 2014. Uh, you can't ask for a whole lot more than that out of a kid. I mean. At, at, you know, there's going to be winners and losers. I, I tend to look at Darian as a winner. Yeah, Darian, he loves the spotlight. The bigger the match, the, the better he wrestles. He, um, he's got a ton of talent. Uh, a little undersized, but he put on a lot of, put on a lot of a muscle this summer. So he's he's starting to become a 25 pounder. Um, he's very exciting to watch. He has a lot of tools. Uh, so you know, we look forward to big things to Darian. And Randy Cruz's brother, of course. But I want to go back to something you said about Darian. He wrestles much better in front of a large crowd, or the bigger the crowd, the better. Um, not everybody's like that. Some people are, are what I call shrinking violets. Other people just absolutely blossom. Where does that come from? Is it is it mind? Is it heart? Is it vision? Or is there a complement of all those things? It's a comp. It's everything. Um, it just I think growing up in the Lehigh Valley, they wrestled at Bethlehem Catholic. Um, they've always had a lot of big matches, big crowds, and I think they and that's what they train for. Uh, I think you saw it with his, one of his high school teammates last year, and Zeke Moyes. He got to the NCAA tournament, and he had a great tournament. They they just love the spotlight. And I, you know, I, I'm one of those guys too that just I think I perform better than more people are in an arena. I absolutely do. I. It's a t tremendous group you've got there. I want to finish talking in particular about group uh, and highlighting a few guys. But Randy Cruz, Darian's brother, two-time EIWA champ, just missed that All-American mark last year. Yeah, that was a tough one for him. Um, he lost a lot of sleep over that match. You know, he, it, was a, it was a good match. Uh, made a great opponent. But, uh, you know... It, it really forced Randy to have, look at himself and have a really good summer working on his feet. He had a lot of takedowns yesterday at the tournament, which was good to see. He was very offensive. 
Um, and that's one thing we're working on with him. So if he can stay active on his feet and keep keep things moving, he'll he'll have some fun matches this year. And talking about these guys that, and things you've worked on, are you also talking about how the season is going to end, about where it's going to end, the importance of uh, you know performing well all the way to Madison Square Garden? You know, the goal is always March. Um, that's always our goal. But our focus is always on today. Uh, when you get ahead of yourselves, that's when I think this team has gotten in trouble in the past. I think we just have to focus on what we can do today to get better. And if we focus on the right now, and we can't control tomorrow, we can't control yesterday, but we focus on the day, things will take care of themselves. And the Cruz brothers are obviously focusing. They both won titles uh, to lead Lehigh at the Jonathan Colos Bearcat Open. Uh, and imp- a great weekend for them was important, wasn't it, Coach? It was. Just getting off to a good start is important. I think that leadership that they provide on the team is really important. Um, it was good to see some of our freshmen come through in the tournament and wrestle really well. Um, and that's when we went. One, we want to take the whole team to a tournament and just see how they work together and, and we're in each other's corners. And it was, it was fun to see yesterday. It was tied up in Lewisburg, PA, with three bouts remaining. We go to Bucknell yeah. and, uh, uh, and your squad on the road at Bucknell, and uh, there's a program that continues to grow, new facilities being built even as we speak. But 12-12 with three bouts remaining. Take us from there. Um, you know, we, we like who we have in, in the lineup up top, and we knew it would be a, a, a tough match. Bucknell always comes ready to wrestle Lehigh. Uh, that's why we like wrestling them. We know it's going to be a challenge. Um, we started off the way we, we wanted to, the way we drew it up. Uh, I thought our guys wrestled pretty aggressive, though. Um, we, but we had 12 false starts. Wow. which cost us two matches in the first two matches. You know, one put us in overtime, and we had another false start in overtime. And the other one, we lost by a point in that match. So uh, tactically and strategically, we didn't, we didn't wrestle very well that way. But overall, I thought the guys wrestled pretty well. Um, those are things that are easier to fix. You know, you, you know fixing fights tougher, but uh, the tactical stuff's easier to fix. And, but then, you know, Cortland Schuyler stepped up, came up big when we needed it. And then going into those last few matches, you know, we had, you know, um, you know, um, Mitch Benati came through with the win, which he needed. And then Ryan Price hasn't competed in 11 months. He came through with the win and he had a lot of nerves early on. You can see that. Uh, definitely, you know, going back home, kind of wrestling, you know, grew up 15 minutes from Lewisburg. Um, he did a nice job. And then, you know, Nate Brown, you know, it's kind of like a coming home party. He just went out and he was, Nate was a little disappointed. It wasn't more offensive in the All Star match. And he went out and I think he got 11 takedowns. So he was just focused on one, one goal was just, just keep scoring points and not worry about the score. Uh, and then, you know, John Bullock was just, he, John's just very consistent. And then Max Russell went out and he scored a handful of takedowns also. So it was a fun way to finish the match. You know, we love to win all of them. But, you know, we have Russell, a really good team. That doesn't always happen. I've seen uh, footage. And, Coach, what I noticed is that your team is constantly shooting. Um, and I know that's part coaching. It's part desire to win. But forward progression is huge for me. Uh, that's you take yourself out of the stalling situation right away if you're constantly pushing forward. And you guys were, I think you outshot them big time. Yeah, it was our, our focus for this year. I thought last year, I, I thought, I don't know, sometimes in big matches, some of our guys got tentative. Um, we don't want that style. We want our style that like, you train too hard to stand around and wait for things to happen. So we, we're really pushing that, and uh, we're not nearly where we need to be. Um, but, you know, the goal is by March that we're, we're pulling that trigger and moving forward all the time. You know, Brown was wrestling in front of a hometown crowd, and uh, i got to believe he wanted to perform that much better uh, performing there. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. You know, he, you know, senior year going back home, wrestling his hometown, I, I think he had, a, he, had, he had a lot of fans there for him. It felt like a home match for him. Uh, so he was excited to go back. Anytime he can go home and wrestle, it's always a good thing. 23 to 12, the final score over Bucknell. Is that a harbinger of things to come? Uh, oh, I mean, it's a Bucknell does a great job. I think it's a, it's a great conference rival. It's just one of those we, we like to keep them on our schedule. Um, last year, we, were, we owed them last year. We just didn't work in our schedule where uh, they couldn't get a free date the one we can get a free date. But there's so many teams we want to wrestle. Uh, we're trying to keep them on our, our schedule every year. Coach, uh, we, we talk a bit about scheduling and and. And uh, it doesn't get any easier from here. Minnesota and Nebraska, you're going to be yeah. facing them on the 15th. That's uh, They get a jump from the frying pan into the fire, as it were, and so do you guys. Yeah, um, both those teams are really well coached. They wrestle very aggressively. And, you know, those are the, we really wanted to see some really good teams that first semester, and we have an opportunity to do that. So we're excited to go compete against them. Uh, traditionally, they have their powerhouses. Um, 
a lot of ranked opponents wrestling this weekend. So it's important just as far as just, you know, maybe NCAA seeding. It's important for, um, you know, just sort of our, the experience we're going to get from this. Uh, because the value is we got to get better every weekend out. And uh, if we wrestle those top tier teams on a consistent basis, that'll prepare us for the postseason. You know, it's, I think it's, you can sit back and look at, at footage on Nebraska and understand them better as perhaps where they are and what kind of team you're going to be facing there. But Minnesota, in, in many ways, is, is largely an unproven commodity. How do you prepare for that? Well, it, if you know wrestling, you know Minnesota has really good, talented wrestlers on their team. I, I just think some of those kids weren't in the rankings early just because they were young, but they're they're very well coached. They have a very good group of, of wrestlers, um, and I think they showed that this weekend. They had a really good weekend. They had some big wins this weekend, and so you know it's going to be a, a dog fight. You know, if you're going to you know perform against those teams, you better be ready to battle. Who's your favorite competition of the year, coach? Is there somebody you are just dying to see each and every year? No, I think we just love to compete. You know, you know the next weekend, you know, the next match. Um, I think there's this. We love watching these guys train. We love watching them compete. And I think for us, there's no. I mean, I think ultimately it's just the you know the EIWA tournament, the NCAA tournament. Those are the two things we really just we really look forward to that postseason. EIWA championships will take place in Princeton. Not a, it's still travel for you guys, but uh, not too bad to travel. But New York. <laughs> I, I like New York. I like the way we end the season. Uh, big bright lights, big city. What are your thoughts? No, and absolutely. You know, you know, Princeton's an hour away. New York City's an hour and a half away. So it's, it's for us. It's it's right in our backyard. We're excited about that. You can join Lehigh University in their battle for a championship within conference and also within the NCAA. Look for them online at lehighsports.com. Our guest in the Nike hot seat today has been a good friend of the program over the years, Pat Centura, the head coach there, doing things right, recruiting great kids, highly intelligent kids, tough place to get into Lehigh University, and they have to balance things out. And perhaps that's the greatest challenge, Pat, is, is making sure that uh, – you know, these kids are meeting their academic responsibilities as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, they know the challenge. I mean, they, they, the, the athlete that makes it here is one that's very focused. Um, they want to get that degree. Um, they're, they're not just looking for the next four or five years, but they're looking for the next 30, 40 years. Um, but, you know, everybody that's here, they're, they have a goal of winning a national title, but they also have a goal of where they're going to be, you know, in 10, 20 years from now. Carrying that logo and carrying the colors, the brown or the white or the white and the brown, no matter where you come from, you say it the same way. But uh, that's it, a lifetime achievement through academic excellence, and they can get it at Lehigh University. Pat, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you were on the road pretty much all night long and uh, getting back there uh, in the wee hours, but uh, job well done on the weekend. Looking forward to seeing the next results from you guys. And uh, you tell those guys, man, I tell you what, they're awfully fun to watch. Well, thanks for having me, Scott. I appreciate it. It's always fun. Again, fans, look for the schedule. Join them where you can. Follow them online. Follow them audio, video, etc. LehighSports.com. Pat Centro has been our guest. I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching.